Mathieu Ferland, uh, I'm producer of uh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Uh, I'm responsible of the budget, I'm responsible of the deadlines of the, of the product, and of course I'm responsible of the quality and uh, the general content of uh, the title. There's currently uh, 45 people in the team. Depending on the stage of, de of development, there was between maybe 20 and 55 people uh, working on the team. The development of Splinter Cell has started uh, about two years ago, much before the, the, the starting of the development of the, of the title. Uh, a lot of ideas were just uh, running around and we had a lot of thoughts in our mind about that. We wanted to create a, a new hero um, uh, for our, our company. We've been inspired by a lot of uh, movie, a lot of realism. So uh, we wanted to create this character that does a lot of uh, athletic moves and uses uh, high-tech gadgets. We wanted the game to be highly uh, interactive with uh, the environment, so we wanted a lot of things to be breakable or interactable. So uh, this was the, the, the key elements of uh, where it all started. Sam Fisher is a solo operative acting and operating on the field. This group doesn't care about uh, international treaties or uh, political agreement, you're just gonna do what the government asks to do in terms of investigation, in terms of uh, finding uh, information, critical information that could be uh, a menace to, to the country. Of course, uh, Sam has to, has to get the bad guys, has to infiltrate, find uh, critical information to, uh, to solve the, 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 the plot and of course to neutralize the bad guys. If he fails, then automatically the U.S. government government will deny his involvement and, uh, and, and it will deny uh, even the existence of, of this guy. So Sam Fisher would be in, in deep trouble. And this aspect brings a lot of tension in the game. And uh, through all the mission, you know that you can fail because you won't be welcome anymore in your own country. There's a lot of, uh, of gadgets uh, in the game because uh, uh, we didn't want it to focus on weapons because uh, as it is, Unlike other Clancy games, well, it's all about uh, about weapons and firearms. Uh, it, with Splinter Cell, it's more about stealth, stealth rules, stealth moves, and um, you need to know where you need to go. You need to know to to, ins to inspect uh, the area. So you got to use uh, a lot of gadgets to do that. One of the gadgets I like a lot is uh, the what we call the sticky camera. It is quite innovative in, in video games as well. Uh, it allows Sam to, to throw uh, a little camera in his, the launcher of his F2000. Using the stick, the sticky cam, he'll be able to define what are the location uh, of the, ba the bad guys. Uh, what is uh, the level of uh, luminosity? What is the, where are the lights? Because Sam needs to interact a lot with the lights as well. So this, the, the sticky cam is really a, a very nice uh, gadget. The snake, snake camera, uh, which is also called an optical cable camera, that allows uh, Sam Fisher to see uh, under most of the doors in the game. He can 
uh, you can have a chance to, to, to look what's behind the door and check if it's safe. I really like also uh, the way we've implemented uh, our Heat Vision goggle. This is a very nice gadget that it, it is very pow powerful actually because it allows Sam to see through walls so he can see the enemy behind uh, some walls he can see any heat signature behind walls so we wanted our main character to be uh, able to switch on or off some lights or to shoot uh, light bulbs uh, to be able to change um, his environment and create his own path uh, through it so um, this was one of our, uh, of our goal and this is one of the features we're, we're uh, really proud of. The rendering uh, we used uh, to create this specific style, we, uh, we've implemented a filter in the 3D render uh, to make Splinter Cell unique. We also developed a physics system on soft bodies uh, that allows any, any soft bodies like flags, like spider web, like curtains to move. Uh, while there, uh, there is wind, or while you're shooting on it, or while you're just passing by. When we started the development of, of Splinter Cell, we had a fair, and very good idea of what we wanted it. We wanted it to be in terms of uh, graphics, uh, and um, the Xbox allowed us to to go even further than than, than what we, we expected in the beginning with Splinter Cell. We, uh, we've been to maybe not the limit of the Xbox, uh, but it shows what the second generation of games can do on Xbox. And I think it's a, it's a very good sign for, for the future and for upcoming titles as well. On November 18th, 2002, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, developed by Ubisoft's Montreal studio, hit the streets. It featured American Black Ops agent Sam Fisher and showcased his role in an ultra-secret NSA division called Third Echelon. Splinter Cell borrowed some of its sneaky gameplay mechanics from popular games like Thief and Metal Gear Solid. It emphasized stealth, and in a time when first-person shooters like Halo were all the rage, Sam was a lot more frugal with his bullets. Sam's cool demeanor was complemented by the voice acting of Michael Ironside. The stealth action game was an instant success and spawned several sequels and ports across all the major systems and consoles. Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow was released two years later and featured the addition of a multiplayer component which proved very successful over Xbox Live. The subsequent sequels continued to raise the bar when it came to AI, graphics and gameplay. And if successful games mean job security, then Sam Fisher should be employed for a long time. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is generating buzz that's making it one of the most anticipated titles coming this holiday season. Ubisoft's development team in Montreal has been hard at work on the game and is looking to push the envelope of stealth action games. When you develop under Tom Clancy franchise, it means uh, it means that you need to validate and to justify everything. We really want the player to feel that, oh my god, uh, this could happen for real, like tomorrow. The NSC created this solo operative that can react quickly. It can be, of course, a little more stealth than uh, classical um, counter-terrorist squads. Sometimes we would, uh, we would use uh, video footage of ourselves acting a, a motion movement and use it as a reference for key poses and timing. The inspiration came from a lot of sources. Uh, for moves like rappelling, uh, we use realistic SWAT tactics. We also wanted to have action moves in, in the game, so for uh, rolling, split jump, force cooperation, human shield, we turn to Harvey, movies. Hello, Rathbun. Sam's a very frightened guy. You know, you know, that's why he sort of walks in and does stuff like, hi, I'm gonna kill you. Because if you're a happy guy, you can make go, hi, I'm gonna kill you. Hey, smile, try and blink, say cheese, thank you. The idea was to make uh, a fully interactive environment. 
make it possible to shoot a computer, take a soda can, and make sure to um, distract an enemies. Um, but much more importantly, to shoot out lights. Shooting lights allow for a different gameplay experience depending on uh, basically how you play. That was the ultimate goal, and um, well, we made it happen. We realized that Splinter Cell had a lot of unique elements, but we wanted to attract players on the game on a visual basis. So we had some visual touches, like the soft physics system, which use what we call soft body. Soft body are anything in the environment that isn't solid, like curtains and flags. This was the unique visual that we need to differentiate Splinter Cell from the other game. It's all about mixing those features together that would provide either interesting gameplays or uh, interesting graphic uh, results. This is now. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is already being touted as the Metal Gear Solid Killer. Now those are big words, but one look at this game shows that Splinter Cell is more than just talk. You'll don a form-fitting black bodysuit and assume the role of Sam Fisher, an agent for a super-secret branch of the national security agency called the Third Echelon. This third echelon is a splinter cell of the government, tasked with doing some of the dirtier jobs asked by Uncle Sam. The, the, the game is going to be split into uh, 12 different levels. Um, the, the way you progress into the game is uh, you, you won't start with all your weapons and all your gadgets, because uh, there are so many of them uh, that you need first to really master them well. So uh, the game is progressive in that sense. And uh, you start with missions that are a little bit easier. And, uh, and when you arrive, like I said, the middle of the game, then you get everything, like all your weapons, all your gadgets. And that's when the game gets really, really interesting. Just like in Metal Gear Solid, you'll play through a third-person perspective. However, the camera is much more dynamic. You can use one control stick to move, while the other has full control of the camera. When you bring up your gun to fire, the camera moves in close right over your shoulder and a targeting reticle appears. In this mode, Splinter Cell controls like a first-person shooter. While standing in total darkness, you'll virtually be invisible to enemy eyes, while well-lit areas are to be avoided. But uh, it's not only window dressing. Basically, in the game, as it's a stealth game, you need to use all those shadows. And, um, and what you can do also is create your own shadows sometimes by shooting some lights. Sam will also have his share of gymnastic moves, such as being able to bounce from wall to wall, Jackie Chan style, and do the splits in a narrow hallway to avoid guards below. A slew of high-tech weaponry will be available to you with a silenced FN 5.7 pistol and a multi-purpose sniper rifle falling in the first category. Night vision goggles are mandatory nowadays, but Sam is also decked out with a set of thermal goggles, which displays the heat signatures of everything around. Mission obstacles will vary from obtaining secret documents in an enemy base to infiltrating the Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C. They found us. Of course, any game that's expected to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Metal Gear Solid 2 has to look good. And boy, does Splinter Cell look good. One of the most incredible features is the real-time shadows. Watch as the shadows will show up not just on Sam, but even on the gear he carries. Red Storm knows tactical shooters, and from what we've seen so far, it looks like Metal Gear Solid has some fierce competition coming. So we say, Snake who? Wer hier durch düstere Lüftungsschächte schleicht, ist kein Bösewicht, sondern Sam Fisher, seines Zeichens Agent beim amerikanischen Geheimdienst NSA. Achtet jetzt mal auf die Skala rechts über der Waffenanzeige. Die bedeutet nämlich, wie gut Sam gesehen werden kann von seinen Feinden. Hier im Dunkeln ist sie ganz links. Wenn er ins Licht tritt, wandert sie nach rechts rüber. Das heißt, wenn Feinde in der Nähe sind, können sie ihn auch wahrnehmen. Anschleichen, Vorsicht, nicht aufs Glas treten und dann heimlich, still und leise von hinten an den Feind. Weil Sam kein Killer ist, bedroht und betäubt er die Leute bloß. Dieser Herr hier soll ihm den Alarm ausschalten. Das tut er auch. Four, three, two, 
Allerdings geht etwas schief und dann muss Sam doch zu anderen Mitteln greifen. Normalerweise ist er allerdings eher vorsichtig. Hier wird ein betäubter Gegner, wie bei Metal Gear Solid, in den Schatten versteckt. Beachtet, was für schöne Lichteffekte die Splinter Cell Engine darstellen kann. In gut bewachten Arealen empfiehlt es sich erstmal vorsichtig um die Ecke zu lugen, ob man nicht vielleicht den einen oder anderen Gegner ohne großes Aufsehen ausschalten kann. Damit Sam auch überall hinkommt, wo er hin will, kann er zum Beispiel gleiten, klettern und Free Climbing an Drahtgittern betreiben. Zum Schluss noch eine Stelle, die sehr schön zeigt, wozu die Grafik-Engine von Splinter Cell imstande ist. Wunderbare Lichteffekte und wunderschöne bewegende Vorhänge. Liebe Leser, nicht so laut, denn hier schleichen wir uns gerade im Spiel Splinter Cell durch einen dunklen Keller und gleich wird vor uns der erste Gegner auftauchen, den wir möglichst überraschend, das heißt leise beseitigen. Ja, ein schneller Schuss, er hat gar nichts gemerkt und schon können wir uns geduckt weiterschleichen. Ja, Splinter Cell sehen wir hier in der Version für die Xbox von Microsoft. Leider ist die PC-Version nicht ganz so weit, aber die Grafik sieht auch so schon sehr gut aus und was klar zu erkennen ist, sind diese tollen Animationen, die sehr gut gewählten Texturen und man kann davon ausgehen, dass die Version auf dem PC noch deutlich besser aussehen wird, weil die Auflösung einfach höher sein kann und weil man zum Beispiel auch besser mit Maus und Tastatur steuern können wird. Hier sieht man sehr schön, wie gut Licht und Schatten gemacht sind. In Splinter Cell sieht es manchmal so aus, als würde jeder einzelne Lichtstrahl exakt berechnet werden. Natürlich tricksen die Entwickler etwas, aber alles wirkt schon sehr realitätsnah. Wie zum Beispiel auch dieses Spinnennetz hier, das nicht nur ganz hübsch aussieht, sondern auch noch sich realistisch bewegt, wenn der Held durchspringt. Alle Animationen der Figuren sehen wirklich toll aus, vor allem die des Helden. Ein kleines Detail am Rande ist, dass man hier zum Beispiel Glasscherben auf dem Boden sieht. Steigt der Held darauf, würde er seine Gegner aufmerksam machen. Wir vermeiden das natürlich, sondern schleichen uns an diesen einen Gegner heran. Und da kann man etwas sehen, was Splinter Cell auch wieder abhebt von anderen Produkten. Der Spieler muss nicht einfach jeden Gegner töten, sondern hier kann er ihn mit einer Waffe an den Kopf bedrohen, quasi in den Schwitzkasten nehmen und zwingen, für ihn die Daten aus dem PC auszulesen. So kann man nicht nur Gegner zwingen, etwas zu tun, sondern man kann sie auch als Schutzschild benutzen. Die meisten Feinde werden nämlich dann nicht auf sie schießen, bis auf ein paar wenige, die trotzdem einfach drauf losballern. In Splinter Cell gibt es jede Menge Scripted Events, wie hier zum Beispiel. Das heißt, während wir gerade die Daten klauen, kommen schon wieder Spezialeinheiten unserer Feinde heran, werfen Granaten und jetzt müssen wir natürlich schauen, dass wir möglichst schnell diesen Raum verlassen können, und zwar unverletzt. Im Kampf gegen unsere Gegner hilft uns jede Menge Spezialausrüstung, hier zum Beispiel das Wärmesichtgerät. Damit kann man sehr schön erkennen, dass über uns ein Gegner läuft, der ist nämlich etwas wärmer als das Steingemäuer, das blau hier dargestellt wird. Und so kann ich mich dann etwas überraschend für ihn anpirschen und ihn beseitigen, sobald er seinen Kopf über die Mauer hebt. Auf unserem Weg durch Splinter Cell lässt es sich halt nicht vermeiden, dass wir auch den einen oder anderen Gegner liquidieren. Und damit er nicht seine Kollegen aufmerksam macht, müssen wir ihn Huckepack in ein dunkles Eck schleppen und ihn da irgendwo ablegen, damit ihn keiner findet. Stößt nämlich eine gegnerische Wache darauf, dann wird sie Alarm auslösen. Eine weitere besondere Fähigkeit unseres Helden ist, dass er quasi um die Ecke schießen kann. So schleicht es sich unbemerkt an und kann den einen oder anderen Gegner beseitigen, ohne selbst gesehen zu werden. 
Viele der Umgebungen lassen sich auch geschickt einsetzen. Nicht nur, dass man durch Licht und Schatten frühzeitig Gegner erkennen kann, sondern wie hier lässt sich dieses Aquarium zerschießen und Wasser rinnt auf dem Boden. Natürlich nicht ohne Hintergedanken, denn jetzt nutzen wir die kleinen Elektrogeschosse und sobald ein Gegner im Wasser steht, fritzeln wir ihn quasi weg. Der grafische Effekt mit blau-weißen Lichtblitzen fehlt hier zwar noch, wird aber in der fertigen Version natürlich drin sein. Okay, now, um, you can see that we, we uh, implemented physics on somebody, so these curtains are pretty interactive. You can, uh, I'm just going to show you what happens when I'm throwing a grenade on these curtains. There you go. So it is, it is fully interactive and uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. I'm going to use what I call, what we call a sticky camera that will be launched. I'm gonna launch it with uh, my F2000 launcher. So, it's going to this wall, and now I can control and scan the whole area to see what's going on. I can see there's a guy there, there's another one on the, on the left, and I'm currently right here controlling this little camera. What I got here, at the end of this, um, of this room, there are two guards. There is also an aquarium right there with fishes. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a little hole, you see the water going down, and it creates a little water puddle on the floor. I'm gonna shoot another one and create a bigger water puddle. Now, what I can do is to select what I call a sticky shocker that gives electric shocks to the enemy. I'm gonna wait until the guard are looking for me, and once they got both feet into the water puddle, I just have to neutralize them. There's another one who's done in the water. I'm just gonna shoot at him. There you go. So this is a, a non-lethal non weapon, which is really useful because when you sneak around uh, the highest rank of, of national security, you need to do that without leaving a trace. So uh, you really need this kind of gadget. Notice once again, the dynamic lighting provided by, by the game. Everything is, um, is fully interactive. You can shoot those lights. You can shoot any other kind of object. You can use object and throw them away to create a dis distraction and uh, sneak around uh, guard guards where they're looking uh, elsewhere. On the dark area, you're fully invisible. You're fully hidden, and if it is on the right, you're fully visible. I'm gonna knock this guy down, and I'm gonna I'm gonna carry this body and to make sure I'm not leaving a trace. Once again. Notice the uh, the physics on these curtains. I'm gonna hide the guy, and now I can continue my mission. Ventilation, and I'm gonna use my night vision to find my way into it. I gotta act very carefully, very slowly, because it makes noise. There's a guard behind there. I gotta wait until he's gone. There you go. I'm gonna go slowly. And I need to reach the other room where the programmer Philip Mass I'm looking for is. Notice the shadow, the lighting effect. Okay, here's the room. I'm gonna sneak in. Programmer is just down there somewhere. Ah, so, uh, yeah, there it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak in slowly without making noise. If I run, he will detect me, and uh, the action will be uh, will be over. Oh, it won't be over, but it will be much harder for me to reach my objective. So I need to to force him. So I'm gonna slowly very slowly get there 
and I'm gonna interact with him. There you go. So there's a little cinematics going on explaining all the action, all, all the plot. I can control, fully control the camera while I'm doing that. Shut up. And uh, now he is um, shut off security. I he's shutting off the security. But I will have more Two. company. It's done. There are it's other done. guard that uh, they want that will destroy. There we go. Big explosion. Other guard will destroy the computer. So I need to get out of there. There you go. And I'm gonna. I need to fight this guy. I'm gonna use my thermal vision to make it easier to, lo to locate this guy. There's one guy over here. Stacking down. And there's another one right there. So I'm gonna go right there and find my way to get my secondary objective, which are the destruction of the missile launcher. So here's the door. I need to check what's behind this door, and I'm gonna use my fiber optic camera, snake camera, to check what's there. And it tells me that there's a guard coming, and that's about it.
you have the right to freedom of speech. You have the right to freedom of worship. You have the right to freedom from what? And you have the right to freedom from fear. I alone have the fifth freedom, the right to do whatever it takes to ensure that your four freedoms are protected and preserved. I alone have full authority to spy, steal, destroy, and assassinate in order to protect America and her freedoms. I alone may go above the law to protect the law. I commit brutality to prevent brutality. I may kill to protect the lives of many. I seek not to derive pleasure by inflicting violence on others, but rather to dissuade enemies of our nation. I work alone. If captured or compromised, my country and president will and must disavow any knowledge of my existence and of the fifth freedom. This I understand. I'm Sam Fisher. I'm a splinter cell. freedoms are protected. If captured, my leaders will disavow any knowledge of my existence. I am Sam Fisher. I am a splinter cell. <laughs> 